Hello dear friends, may God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and Israel, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be with you all, all of you. May he meet your most pressing need, the foundation of your life, which is your soul. May your soul have an encounter with him so that then it may be preserved alive with him for all eternity. The greatest struggle that we all face Every one of us, sinners or saints, all of us face this. It's this struggle between our personal will, our personal will, and the will of the world, the will of evil. The will of men happens exactly in the soul. It's in the soul where desires for what the world offers is stirred. And it's also in the soul that a desire to know God is stirred. So whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, that's the reality. When our soul desires the things of God, it contradicts its own flesh. It contradicts the world. However, it pleases God. But when the soul opts, chooses to follow the whims of the world, the lusts of the world, then your soul is choosing the wrong way. So in these past days, we've spoken about, I classified them as groups. We spoke of the four groups, or rather five groups actually, that were destined to the lake of fire and brimstone. The first group we spoke about was with the beast and the false prophet. The beast and the false prophet. This was the first group to be judged and condemned to the lake of fire and brimstone. The second group was Satan, the devil. We spoke about this yesterday. The devil was part of the second group. He was cast as well into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet were already at. The third group is with death and Hades. So pay attention. In chapter 19 of Revelation, it speaks, it's very interesting. The chapter 19 speaks of the judgment of the beast and the false prophet, the lake of fire and brimstone. In chapter 20, it speaks of the second group, which is the devil. The devil was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. The third group to be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone is death and Hades. The fourth group, this is very nice, very nice. This makes us think 
carefully before choosing to please ourselves or to please God. This involves this judgment here, this final judgment. This is the end of everything. Everything will come down to this, either to eternal salvation or eternal perdition. So, we have here clearly specified in the book of Revelation the groups that were cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. This place is the final destination of all of the enemies of the Most High, all of His enemies, all of God's enemies. So we saw that first was the beast and the false prophet. They were the first ones to be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. In chapter 20, it says that the devil was also cast into the lake of fire. Then in chapter 20, it also says that death and Hades were cast as well into the lake of fire and brimstone. Death and Hades. Can you imagine Hades? We have an idea. We all have an idea, a tiny idea of what hell is like. You know, when Jesus spoke that story, that event there in Babylon, when Lazarus, poor Lazarus, lived a terrible life, but he died in faith in the God of Abraham, his father in faith. He had faith in the God of Abraham, and that's why he called Abraham his father in faith. Father, he was taken by the angels into Abraham's bosom, but the rich man, he was not sent to hell because he was rich. That's not the case. Abraham was rich and didn't go to hell. Isaac, Jacob, David, Solomon, none of them went to hell, even though they failed many times, but still they found God's mercy. But they were rich and they went to Abraham's bosom. But these rich men from chapter 16 of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16 from verse 19, that rich man had conditions to help the poor Lazarus who was by his gate, but he did nothing for him, and he had plenty. He could help him out, but he didn't do it. So he was very... He was very greedy, very selfish and self-centered, very cruel, only thought of himself. And obviously, he, when he went to hell, he himself, with his own words, said, I'm here in torment. So we all have an idea of what hell is like. And we have an idea because we see that the world is a living hell, right? You see so many people, and even ourselves have gone through hell because of problems and the circumstances and so on. The problems that we face, you all have gone through, let's say, a bit of hell. So we have an idea of what it's like. But hell, hell indeed, where the rich man was cast, is a place of torment, of eternal torment. However, imagine when the Bible says that Hades, which is hell, 
death and Hades will be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. This means that in the lake of fire and brimstone, we already be there, the beast, the false prophet, the devil, death, and Hades. Five, five characters, let's put it this way, five elements, five elements. Don't you forget this. This is important for you to know so you may have an idea of how valuable your soul is, how precious your soul is in God's eyes. It may not be for you, but it is before God. So let me repeat it. The first ones to be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, this place is already reserved for them. So first, the beast and the false prophet, which will be manifested in the time of the Antichrist. For seven years on earth, the Antichrist will reign. In the first three years and a half, the Antichrist will reign as a man of peace as a person of peace. He will deceive people with this fake peace. And you've already seen this. You've seen that the world is at war. So God allows, God has been allowing all this that is happening. He allows that all these wars will take place so that the Antichrist may emerge he will emerge as the pacifier, so the world will consider the Antichrist as someone from God because he's peaceful, he comes in the name of peace, but he's a liar and a deceiver. So he, the Antichrist, obviously sustained by the false prophet, he obviously will monopolize the attention of the world with false peace. So when the Bible speaks of the beast and the false prophet, it is referring to the Antichrist and the false prophet that will sustain the beast, the Antichrist. He will be a political leader. The beast will be a political leader and the false prophet will be a religious leader. That's why he's called false prophet. However, the first ones to be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone will be the beast and the false prophet. In chapter 20, this was on chapter 19. So in chapter 20 now, the Lord Jesus speaks about the fact that the devil was cast as well into the lake of fire and brimstone that burns with brimstone where the beast and the false prophet were already sent. So all these three elements will be there. Then he also includes death, which is mankind's number one enemy, and Hades and Death, I want to emphasize here to you that it's not this death here, oh, they are dead, they are resting. No, that's not how it is. What God creates is eternal. What God creates is eternal. When he breathed the breath of life, the soul, the soul will be eternal. Just as when he created the angel, Lucifer, to be the leader of of the angels there in heaven. He created for all eternity. So he cannot die. Satan cannot die. He will not die. He knows that. To die this death that we see that the person goes to eternity. So they do not die. The person does not die. Death does not die. Death doesn't die. Did you know that? Death will be cast into the lake of fire 
alongside Hades. So these four elements right were already cast. The beast, the false prophet, the devil, death and Hades. Five elements. Now comes the sixth element, which is the last one in the description there of Revelation. There in chapter 21, look how interesting, 21, chapter 19 speaks of the beast and the false prophet, the first ones to enter the lake of fire and brimstone. Chapter 20 speaks of Satan as well as death and Hades. And in chapter 21, finally, the sixth group are the souls of those who lived their life according to the devil's will and followed the passions, the lusts of the heart. So the text here says, look at how nice this is. This is strong. Chapter 21. And then this is it. The, the package is complete. All those who will be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone will be together. And it is written in Revelation 21, verse 8, which reads, but, but the cowardly, the cowardly here, are not those who are afraid of this and that. Cowardly here are those who denied or those who deny their faith in Jesus because of the world, because of a friend, because they do not want to risk their reputation. So these people deny Jesus. They believe in Jesus when they are alone. But before the world, they deny Jesus. Jesus said that. He said that those who deny him on earth, I will also deny him. I will deny them before my father. But he who confesses me before men, I shall also confess them before my father. So this is the kind of cowardly the Bible talks about. So, but the cowardly, the cowardly, unbelieving, the unbelieving are those who did not believe in Jesus. Those who have not believed in the Lord Jesus. They did not accept God's offering to save their soul. They didn't accept. These are the unbelieving. The abominable. The abominable ones, you may already have an idea who they are. People who commit, you know, terrible sins, who are an abomination. A person who is truly a sinner, murderers, and by the way, those who are abominable, they know who they are. They know who they are. All those who live to satisfy the lust of their flesh, the lust of their eyes, the lust of their, their own life their desires, all of their lusts, that's it, the abominable, murderers, murderers, sexually immoral, sexually immoral are those who have sex before marriage, they do not want to commit, they do not want to be committed before God's law. They live life without any sort of discipline. They have a woman today, another one tomorrow. They have a, a man today, another one tomorrow. Sometimes it's two 
women or three women and one man and vice versa. It's a total confusion. Things of this nature. Fornicators. Sex without any rules. So, let me repeat. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and it's worth saying, the idolaters are not just those who idolize an image of wood, clay, or metal. No. But those who idolize anything or anyone or even themselves. Those who idolize themselves, they are idolaters. Idolaters are those who place anything or anyone from this world in God's place. For example, I was an idolater because my mother was my goddess. We can put it this way. My mother was idolized until I met Jesus. And when I met him, then my mother was placed in second. So there are people who idolize others. Men, pastors, for example. Pastors, right? who idolize all the people or images or good luck charms. A person walks around with, with a good luck charm. So everything that you place your heart in, it's idolatry. God is the only Lord, the only one worthy of all praise and honor and glory. Do you know what the word God means? God is one who is worshipped. So anything that you place as a God, then you idolize that. Anything. Church, religion, a football club, I mean, a celebrity, any person, in anything of this world, that you place your heart in, this is idolatry. So the idolaters are also going to be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. And then comes the other group that will be cast into the lake of fire, the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which are the liars. Jesus said, I am the truth. But there are people who, even though they are Christians, they say they are Christians, but they lie. They make money with lies. They work with lies. They live for their lies. How can someone like this live eternity with the truth? It's not possible. It's not possible. It's not going to work. So, those who are of the truth will go to the one who is the truth. They follow the truth. That is Jesus. But those who live in lies follow the liar. Jesus said that the devil is the father of lies. So, liars will go where their father is, the devil. The father of lies, the devil, who was already cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Everything that we read in the book of Revelation, this is a prophecy. It speaks of a way that is, it's already happened. Before God, these things have already happened. For us, it will still happen. But for God, it already happened. This has already been determined. It cannot change. Unless the person converts. In life, if you convert here while you still are alive, then while you still are alive, you will be saved from this situation, from the lake of fire and brimstone. So it says here, let me repeat. I will repeat the text of Revelation chapter 21, chapter 21, verse 8. But the cowardly, 
unbelieving, abominable, murderous, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So here, here is the sixth group, the souls of those, all those, all those who died, those who died in this situation, they will go to the lake of fire and brimstone. They are already in Hades. But after Hades, Hades will be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Now you can only imagine, you can only imagine, dear friends, just think a bit, pay attention. This is very strong. When you, when you marry someone who is of God, you are of God, and you marry someone who is of God, who has the same spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, then your home is a piece of heaven. There's peace. I can speak about this because that's how it is in my home. So, there's peace. However, when I was single, I already spoke to you about my family. It was a total of seven brothers and sisters in the house. So we didn't have Jesus. You can imagine the confusion it was. Everyone thinking of themselves, seven brothers and sisters. Everyone wanting to do their own will and living there as a family. So one didn't get along with the other, would shout at the other, or curse another. There was always a fight and so on. The only moment there was no fight is when my father was around, because then everyone would stay quiet. But when he was not there, then was a confusion. And this has been happening in the life of many people, in the house of many people. When husband and wife don't get along, they got along whilst they were dating, until the moment they got married. After they got married, they became like a cat and a dog, and that's how they live, right? And when they have children, the children suffer the consequences of this piece of hell. So, this cat and this dog who live in this living hell in the house, they end up, you see what happens, many kill themselves. In some cases we see the husband killing the wife or the wife killing the husband. I mean, it's hell. And those who are watching me and have been through this know what I'm talking about. Now, only imagine a place that burns permanently with fire and brimstone because the text here says that the lake of fire and brimstone is a lake that burns with fire and brimstone. So imagine billions of people together with Satan, with the beast, with the false prophet, with death, with Hades, a package, everyone cast into the same place, a place where there is no, there's not even a second of peace. There's no night, there's no tablet to sleep, there's nothing to make one sleep, there's nothing. There's no tranquilizer, it's 24 hours a day for all eternity suffering and everyone there together. 
even if there was no fire, even if there was no fire in the lake, if this unbearable heat wouldn't be there, the fact is that only the presence of Satan, the beasts, the false prophet, death and Hades, these would be enough, only these would be enough for this place to be a lake of fire, a lake of suffering and pain for all eternity. Dear friends, I am not exaggerating. I'm not even saying enough. I'm just trying to give you a glimpse with basis on what I know, what I read, on what I meditate, by what I understand, by what God has given me. I see, and what I can tell you, it's, it's just the smell of what's going to happen in this place called Lake of Fire, Lake that burns with fire and brimstone. Jesus is the one who spoke about this. The lake that burns with fire and brimstone. And then the presence of evil is there. And now all those who followed evil, all those who followed the devil, the father of all lies, all those who followed the beast, the false prophet, all those who died without Jesus, meaning they went to eternity without Jesus, they died without him. All of those who are in hell, all of them will be cast, all of them, this entire package will be cast into the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. So, what I want you to evaluate and consider is your soul. Where is your soul going? Are you sure, for example, that your name is written in the book of life? Because it says here, and anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Cast into the lake of fire the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. The one who decides the destination of your soul is yourself. You decide where your soul is going. But is there hope for me, Bishop? Of course there is. There was hope for me. How come there won't be any hope for you? There is hope for everyone. Not too long ago, I was talking to Bishop Bira there from the United States. He does a work in one of the prisons where he does this evangelistic work in a place where there is a corridor of death. There's a hundred plus people in this prison. All of them have been condemned to death. All of them. And he was telling me that he was with a certain man who was going to be condemned on Thursday. He was going to be executed. And he went to see him on a Tuesday. And he spoke to him and spoke about Jesus and he pay attention this man killed an entire family he killed them all in cold blood so he was condemned to death and he was about to be executed on Thursday of last week if I'm not wrong and Bishop Biro went there on a Tuesday and spoke to him, and he accepted Jesus. He gave his life to him. He was baptized in water there because he took a cup of water. The pastor cannot do that. So he took a cup of water he had there to drink, and he poured on his head in the name of the Lord Jesus as though he was getting baptized. 
he was baptized, he was saved, and on Wednesday, he wrote, there's a way for them to communicate with the bishop. They have a way to communicate. I think there's like a tablet where the prisoners can contact people that has already been specified for them to contact. So he confessed, listen, I'm going peacefully. I'm saved. I'm sure that I'm going to heaven. Praise God. God forgave me. Man did not forgive me. Man's justice did not forgive me. I was rightfully condemned, but I found forgiveness before I faced death. And indeed, he was killed and he was saved. The last moment he was saved. And we shall continue the work there to try and save those who are there. So there's hope for everyone. Whilst the person is alive, there's salvation. There's a chance of salvation. There's a chance, but they must decide. Jesus commanded us to preach the gospel all over the earth, all over the world, to every tribe and tongue and people. And that's what we are trying to do. Wherever God opens a door for us, we come in. However, we preach the word, we teach the word. But the one who decides whether to accept the word or not, who is Jesus, then they are saved if they accept him. Okay, I accept Jesus as he died for me. So I accept him. Even if it's in the last moment, if they accept him, they are saved right there and then. God is wonderful, isn't he? How glorious is this faith. God gives us faith. He gives us this faith to believe in his son. He gives faith. All those who hear his word have a chance of having this faith and accept him as their Lord and Savior. So if your name, if you are not sure, if you have doubts, however small this doubt is, that you are not saved, that your soul was not saved, there's hope for you, even here, right now, in this moment, in this instant, as I'm speaking to you, you can be saved. Did you know that? Perhaps you are in prison, in hospital, in a clinic, or you are in the last moment of your life, but there's someone who placed a radio there, and you can hear this message. And if you accept Jesus, you are saved right there. Even if you can't even speak, or you can't even be baptized in water anymore. But just the fact that you are thinking that, oh Jesus, have mercy on my soul. Right there, in the last moment of your life, you are saved. That's what happened to the thief on the cross. In the last moment, he acknowledged Jesus and he said to him, Today you shall be with me in paradise. Praise God. God's mercy is for everyone. It does not matter what they've done or what they didn't do. What they did wrong or they didn't do right. What matters is the following. If they surrender their soul to Jesus, if they surrender their life to Jesus and they start to live according to his will, according to his word, then they are saved. If they are about to die, there's no more, there's no life anymore. They are dying. If they accept Jesus, even if it's just in their mind, my Lord, have mercy on my soul, they are saved in that moment. But this is only possible when the person hears and obeys attend to the calling of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. And he commands his disciples, his servants, to go into all the world to preach the gospel. Those who believe and are baptized shall be saved. Even if they are not baptized, though, because there is no time to do that. But they believed and they are saved. May God bless you all and I see you tomorrow. And don't forget... Don't forget, 
and anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake burning with fire and brimstone. Chapter 20, verses 14 and 15. You can read it afterwards. I'll place it here in the description. It's the second death. This death is eternal. This death is eternal. Because it's not that the person will be sleeping, resting. No, there's no such thing. Do you think that God will allow the devil to just be sleeping throughout eternity, resting? No way. And just as it happens with the devil, it will happen with all of his followers. This is my faith. It's my belief according to the Holy Scriptures. May God bless you all and I see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen.